Larry. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Thomas. Um, hello, Yate, Shay, Richard, the Crane, and Che. Um, Kitna Chini, Bush, Ching, Goggin, and Inchle. Um, Ashin, the Shate, Goggin, and the Shanala, Kutay, the Nay, and Shle. Um, Aro, I see at the, um, Tayara Nasha, um, Kutay at the Nay, and Shle. Um, hello, everybody. Um, in Facebook land, Facebook world. Um, what's today? Today is Tuesday, the 27th of April. Got some crazy hair today. <laughs> Wind was blowing today. Um, what did we talk about last week? Um, I think we. Uh, what did we talk about last week, Thomas? Talking circles. <laughs> yep, we talked about talking circles. Um. Yeah, and the importance of talking circles, you know, what they're used for, what we use them for here at the um, at the youth center and, you know, with uh, well Bridey and, um, <clears throat> um, and that and what it's used for and, and the good uses and, you know, the things that we use. Also, like in our circles, our, our ceremonial circles, you know, we have um, the use of uh, talking circles um, in a form, you know, in ceremonial setting. You know, even the powwows are, are set up that way. Um, a lot of our houses and our um, ceremonial places usually face to the east, and so you know we. Um, so that circle in itself is it's already established, you know, on Mother Earth or wherever we have our ceremonies, and so it's been really um, a significant, very, um, you could say, useful tool that we use in Indian country. Uh, me uh, myself too, when I do a lot of my native teachings. Um, you know, I use that um, that style of teaching. You know, where it's really a uh, one-on-one -on -one versus you know having the the Western point of teaching, where you know where someone is up front and talking to it. a class of or students, um, a class of students. You know, sitting in chairs, and you know something's blocking them. Versus you know the talking circle where it's open. And, you know, I'm one-on-one. Uh, -on -one, you know, we're straight. Uh, connecting, I can make that connection with the people right in front of me. And nothing's blocking, like with like a chair or a table in front of us. Uh, so it's very different, very um, unique, and it's been used for over 500 years. You know, before um, Columbus came to our country, um, many things. You know, it's been used for generation on generation, and we continue to use that. You know, to this day, like I said, talking circles with uh, we have a, the young kids, uh, V G R R um, Ge Generation Red Road. Uh, talking circles for the youth and you know talking circles for the well bridey um, very useful and, and saying that you know a lot of our what we talk about and what we teach about you know we teach in a holistic um, you know spiritual and you know physical mind body and soul um, to take care of ourselves and you know one of those things you know my son was uh, we were talking the other day and then you know he suggested maybe we should talk about art you know art art is you know in itself art um, is a form of, uh, of prevention in itself, you know, we, it, it can be used for in, in, in that way. I think as Native Americans, we've always used art, <coughs> um, as we, uh, dealt with, you know, things that happened to us, you know, the PTSD from being Native American, uh, we call it multi-generational trauma. Um, a lot of that time, you know, we... Able, we're able to, you know, cope and deal with, you know, such things as, as that, you know, from PTSD, also, you know, from being um, in the military or from wars that we, we've suffered, um, we, get, we have PTSD, and a lot of our family, you know, a lot of our families, um, you know, and sometimes we don't know where it comes from or why it's that way, it just happens, and there's a lot of uh, abuse, um, from alcohol abuse to, you know, different types of abuse and a lot of uh, suicides, and so, to be able to prevent, you know, all those things, you know, it's art has always been a way, you know, that I've, I've been able to cope to cope with a lot of the things that, you know, the hardships that I have in my life, you know, um, from a kid all the way into my adult, adult, I think, I believe, you know, art has always been <clears throat> a part of my life, uh, some way, some form for me, you know, I'm kind of a, an artist, I, I like to do all different types of art. Uh, not just traditional art like beadwork or you know um, 
things like that. Um, also, you know, do sewing. Um, it's kind of a form of art where we make our dance together, our dance outfits. You know, I also do um, art that um, is about storytelling and also showing our dances, you know, telling our stories. Um, and, you know, just thinking about my cedar boxes and, you know, we have a little paint class as you can see behind me. Um, we have uh, a class that we're attending, you know, every 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 Thursday. It would seem like every Sunday and every Thursday you want to have a good friend. Um, that was uh, teaching this paint class and it was virtual and it was free and we, we, we got into it, the whole family, we got into it. We learned how, we didn't know, well, I didn't really know how to paint. I kind of knew, but, I, you know, I didn't know it too much, but, you know, just listen to that and also checking out, you know, <laughs> I think everybody's uh, everybody's probably done this. Maybe you haven't done it yet, but you've uh, gone and uh, watched. I know as a kid I used to watch, um, what's that guy's name? <laughs> I can't even think of the name right now. Um, the guy that does landscaping, Thomas. Bob Ross. Bob Ross, yeah, the Bob Ross. I was, you know, that's the, something I used to see on TV. You know, every now and then would show up, and I was just kind of watching, just kind of watch him do the painting. And he did it really easy and elegant. And I always thought that was cool. Um, as a kid, you know, I didn't my my household. We didn't have uh, a television till 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 we got older, um, or cable. We just had you know, antenna. We had to turn the antenna and go outside to make sure it's not windy. It was, you know, didn't work very good. Work got some of the local station. Uh, one of those stations was PBS, and that's where we saw um, um, Bob Ross. <laughs> uh, but anyway, but before even Bob Ross, you know, my um, I had a uh, quite a few very talented family members, you know, uncles um, and aunts that would do different things. Um, painting. I remember my uncle. Uh, the youngest uncle, you know, he's not here, no longer here, but you know, he used to do a lot of painting. And I used to watch him and do that, and kind of just, you know, see what he did. You know, he would leave these paints all over the place, and I just kind of, you know, mess around. I wouldn't really paint or anything; I just kind of watch and see what he was doing. He, would, you know, be doing painting. Then he also would do, you know, other things like, you know, feather work, working on feathers, and you know, fixing up feathers, um, eagle feathers, um, water bird. Um, all different kind of feathers that they would use in the Native American church ceremony. Um, and so, you know, I kind of grew up around that, you know, uh, uncle and aunts just having, um, I guess, artists, you know, artist type things around, just like, just around me, you know, which, you know, kind of, I've always felt very home, homely to it, you know, and being like a crafty kind of person, you know, my family was always doing crafty things. I remember my mom telling me, like when she went to college, you know, she would do some craft work to make um, money on the side she would do like she made make you make jewelry um, and make money too while she was uh, in, in in college and that's how she made you know some extra money just just to eat and stuff and just to make it by and you know I think I got uh, some teachings from my mom you know and of course my, my aunts um, and their form of um, artwork, which was, you know, sewing, you know, I know my grandma did a lot of sewing on the sewing machine, so she would do, um, she would make all our clothes, basically, and then we, she would also make um, our traditional Navajo cloth, clothing, and so would my aunt, and so that's where I kind of learned how to use the sewing machine, and just watching her, I probably talked about this before, actually, my grandma used to have one of those, where her foot was, like, when I was just like, not, this is not Shamu, and this is where, you know, the, the foot, um, she would use the foot um, to move the the pedals and, um, and the wires for the sew machine, and it would do that. I thought that was so cool, just seeing that how that worked, and it was really cool what she would do. And you know, she did other crafts, you know, yarning. Um, I still have um, this doily that she did, where she did, you know, crocheting, um, a native print, native design. And I remember my aunts doing the same thing. And they would use all kind of uh, different medium or different things. You know, they would use plastic. Um, these wafer things and my aunt used to do um, a form of crocheting which also was you know she would make these things for Kleenex boxes um, and so and just you know just being around all that stuff you know even you know art in in some of our culture we have uh, ceremonies in our Navajo, Navajo culture where we have sand paintings um, I know a lot of people I think I've seen this on PBS one time I've seen a special on Navajos and, and sand painting it was kind of kind of a funny um, little cartoon thing. I think it still plays, but uh, yeah, just thinking about, you know, PBS and now um, how that, you know, played a role in my life. Kind of funny. 
and I went to San Diego State where you know they actually show or host PBS the station is that it was just kind of really pretty cool to think about and things that they did you know they did a lot of work with Neville people I remember seeing one time they had um, a special on Navajo and their their sheep and how they do um, the sand painting um, they would collect a lot of the their um, their media or you know their their colors from different elements that they would find in, in on on Mother Earth or on the, in the world um, they would go and use plants like the cactus plants you know they would use um can't remember that white powder that would you know turn kind of like a, um, a red or maroon kind of a color um, okra I think it's called um, and then you know different um, different stones that would grind up and find and different plants and stuff they would also use you know different plants like that too different corn colors and different stalks and they would kind of grind it up and make a real powder form and they would also use that to dye um, what we call the the Navajo rug I know my mom um, my mom and grandma's did worked on Navajo rugs but we also had um, sheep and this is kind of where you know motion and physical because a lot of native art is very hands-on um, there's things you got to do and not a very you know you have to prepare prepare for a lot of things to to be able to be able to do this form of art you know the art of um, doing Navajo rugs you had to um, you know plan months ahead to learn how you know you have if you had sheep or goat you know you, you'd have to use the mohair and know how to, to um, basically turn it into um, a string or you know woven material so you could use that in your rugs and how do you and if you just have white sheep you know you'd have to learn how to um, dye and, and make your and so there's a whole process that happens you know beforehand and I, I remember seeing my grandma and my grandpa it kind of became a family affair and they would go out and collect collect certain rocks and I always wondered you know why these some of these things were in our house like rocks and different dyes and I just to see that you know I didn't make I was just like you know the young kid you know I was, oh whatever and then take off and go outside and play <laughs> with the animals and you know <clears throat> and then you know come to fi come to see come to find out later on in my life and see all these things that you know my grandparents and my uncles and my aunts they had all these different um things that they had you know they and there was a process like I said process of collecting um, a lot of these materials to make color to dye the 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 wool of the of the of the, the fur that they would use in the Navajo rug, and so now you can see a lot of these Navajo rugs you know cost millions, I want to say millions of dollars, um, and huge ones and small ones and uh, uh, <clears throat> and you know even some of the brushes they would use with some of the old time brushes they would uh, collect and use and it was very interesting to to see that and witness that and see the process you know it took you know it didn't just you know come overnight to make, to make a traditional Navajo rug you know there's a lot of process a whole year processing of your materials and getting it ready and then finally in the winter time that's when you know my aunt with aunts uncles even you know grandmas would um, take time even well they did it all almost year round but uh, that time, you know, they would be doing a lot more um, working on the looms on the inside of the houses. I remember my, my grandma also having a loom outside under the tree, and she would be doing the Navajo rug and just going at it, and, and it was very creative. Uh, and, and I've never seen her write anything down, or like, you know, how some people have to write or do like artistic stuff on, on, on a piece of paper, and then they would follow that, and then they would do whatever art. <laughs> she never did that. She did it straight out of her, you know, out of her mind out of the, the things that made her good and, and and it really I guess it was really therapeutical to her you know helping in a lot of ways different things it was a stress reliever you know just like I always say our, the beadwork that I do in my family my my, my you know my daughter my son uh, my wife you know we do beadwork just to you know relieve stress around this time we're, we're doing a lot of uh, medallions for the graduation graduates you know at the San Diego State and UCSD we'd be doing a lot of medallions and right now we are we already started on UCSD medallions and so we're doing that beadwork and you know we're putting a lot of work into it and, um, but nowadays it's a little easier to get materials I think uh, back in the day you had to trade barter or you know uh, create your own you know go out and, and mother earth and, and you have harvest your own uh, materials um, just thinking about that and around here you know I know the Kumeyaay people the land of the Kumeyaay people they did a lot of that same harvesting for the baskets that they did i mean navajos we also did um basket work 
um, in their baskets, you know, they would go and they would take care of the land, you know, the land was always important. As Indian people, just thinking about last week, you know, last week was, uh, what do they say, they're celebrating uh, <laughs> Mother Earth Day or celebrating spring and all this, you know, things, celebrating Mother Earth. It's like one day, for us as Native people, you know, every day is, um, you know, we, every day we take care of Mother Earth, We every day we pray um, and give thanks to Mother Earth that well, everything that she provides for us, you know, we give thanks in that way, you know, in our prayers, this first thing that we say, you know, thank we thank you, you know, for us for 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 taking care of us, uh, the Mother Earth, and you know, like in saying that, you know, we did a lot of um, especially the Kumeyaay people here thinking about what they used to do of, with um, burning burning of a lot of the bushes or the brushes, you know, it would be good for the land and good for the animals and also good for the crops they would plant, you know, some of those crops would be um, um, stuff for the baskets and different plants they would use, different colors, different color of, of the plant or the thorn or the, the you know, when they would burn, you know, it would it would grow back even bigger. And when you take care of land like that, you know, it becomes a lot, a lot bigger. And so some of their, their media or some of their, you know, the, the stocks that they have compared to nowadays would be, you know, super long, maybe over... Um, over like eight feet or something and they would be able to use that in their baskets maybe even, even more because they you know were taking care of that plant and so you know nowadays it's hard to find um to do baskets and and do that type of work and you still find you know the 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 material growing out there but it's a lot smaller than what it used to be when the natives used to take care of the land but now you know you look around here in california and Kumeyaay territory a lot of it's overgrown um, you know, hazardous, as they say, you know, during fire season, it's very hazardous because it catches on fire and, and compared to, you know, how the natives used to take care of it and, and all this land was all native land, Kumeyaay territory, you know, ranges from here all the way to La Jolla, all the way along the coast, down into Baja and, you know, it's a huge area that they used to take care of and, you know, this place was full of people, full of native people. <clears throat> And trade, you know, was um, one of those things. Um, a lot of times we don't get to hear this um, part of the history. Um, they don't teach us in class. They don't teach us in school. Um, growing up, uh, even in, in, in back home on my reservation, we didn't learn <clears throat> too much about uh, Native culture. It was always all about, you know, U.S. culture and, you know, geography and all these things that... Uh, Kind of made didn't make sense to us because we're Indians <laughs> on our own land, and they would teach us the history, you know, of the Civil War, and like that's not even our history, and we're learning it. <laughs> but anyway, that you know, I digress. Um, th thinking about that, and talking about that. But as Native people, you know, we always wonder, you know, that even you know, like I said, I think my point was, you know, here in even in the urban areas, the schools here are still don't teach you know the curriculum of native people that the original people that are here they don't teach your history so a lot of it's learned afterwards you know in college in you know uh in the college years or by someone telling them that you know has the knowledge that holds that kind of historical knowledge and so you know that you know that plays um so if you i know a lot of uh, people that listen to this haven't really learned about native culture or this is maybe there's this is for first um um intake or first knowledge of learning about native culture and, and but in that way at the same time you know we have our know our our clinic is um open to other cultures besides you know um the native people you know non-native people folks you know can come to our, the the clinic here at indian health um but at the same time you know we're proud of that we're always um it's good to work with different people and and have that way camaraderie it reminds me a lot of in the military we had to work with a lot of different races of people of different that come from different backgrounds, different ethnicities, they can't even say it, ethnicities, <laughs> ethnicities, and you know, that makes more of a powerful uh, uh, workforce of work, it makes it, it just more powerful. And you know, that's kind of an indigenous way of thinking, also a native way of thinking. That's how we used to be, you know, back in the day um, when other cultures used to come into our area, other um, native people would come to our area, you know, we used to have celebrations and and camaraderie and we trade or share <clears throat> events or, or techniques or different things and we would help each other out all the time and you know that's how we survived um 
But anyway, you know, talking about uh, art and Indian art, you know, now you can go to you know art school in Santa Fe, the you know, the famous um, art school in Santa Fe, um, and get a degree in, in art. And art, you know, like I said, is 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 very broad. You could say our different forms of art, you know, are very they're therapeutical. You know, in my family, you know, we've done a lot of painting from beadwork to painting to and you know, we even do other crafts. We have um, a lady. You know, it's called Crafty uh, Crafty Kathy. That I know my wife um, was uh, picking up um, little um, packets over at the uh, um, Escondido Library, and we do these craft things. And my daughter and my kids are usually the ones that are doing it. They all have, they've done like many different crafts besides you know just uh, beadwork and artwork. I know they did. Um, <clears throat> this craft right here I'm looking at it right now um, it's um I can't even think of the name of the what are those plants called Thomas huh? Thomas is watching curious George it's the one where the person you were talking about with the PBS with the... grab me this plant right here <laughs> or this um, we made some little plants or I didn't make it I think the kids and my wife made this plant with... this was one of the the um little crafts that they did let me see it's uh what are these called I almost said silicones <laughs> Silla. um anyway these little um little plants or well, their imitation that was just real basic um um it was really simple when i was watching them and i didn't you know this really didn't i didn't like i didn't participate in this um but it's fairly simple a uh, really cool craft to make succulents that's what it's called succulents so we made like uh, the kids and Karen made like three little succulent things and they're really cute and you know this is you know the type of craft we we don't know uh, we're not biased with our craft only do native craft we do all kind of we craft any way we can <laughs> um, and you know like I said it's you know you gotta just do it sometimes sometimes you know it may be intimidating I know some of the the video they had vid or she had videos the crafty Kathy lady she had videos on YouTube that she would link up or post up and it's pretty interesting pretty cool to do and she would you know just share that I mean watch the video or they, they the kids and my wife would watch the video and they would do the craft whatever it was there was quite a few different crafts I know there's another craft that they just did too was this, this kind of a little ball thing um, it's a little different, but you know, at the same time, different is good. Learning a new craft, a new skill, um, it's a lot of fun. Um, and then my da now my daughter is into um, doing applique with uh, the string, and so you know she has her own little craft um, that she's really enjoying. Uh, I know she did a lot of that, and she's also you know did coloring. Um, a lot of you know she had a native coloring book for a while. Thomas had a coloring book, and they would just color. That in itself, you know, is very artistic. If you see that book that she colors, it's very detail oriented, and it helps them learn how to, to you know, not only stay in spaces and <clears throat> stay in, the, in in the lines as you color. It, it comes out really beautiful pictures that you can you can do. So there's many forms of art, forms of um, things that we can do. You know, don't ever you know limit yourself or limit the kids. You know, I know I work with a lot of kids, and that's the thing that I've always you know was always taught by different my by quite a few of my different mentors you know not to limit the kids you know give them all the tools that they need to be creative you know in that mind that way they'll they'll be able to grow and be their most you know creative or the best person that they can be whatever they want or whatever they choose even though you know it may change from week to week you know even for my son Thomas you know, we've done we've been very supportive for him you know and learning his craft and he's also been you know learning you know the native craft I think um from like beadwork to to learning about you know where things come from and, and the importance of that and, and also you know inspiring by himself you know he, our good friend Sevilla um, we told Thomas or we told her that you know Thomas was in, into painting and she's oh why don't you you know she really offered him gave him a few coaching some coaching classes and lessons on how to use um, you know we just use acrylic art which is a very for Oh, oh, hey James, how you doing? A uh, very uh, kind of safe form of uh, art, acrylic art is kind of safe for kids. Um, if you and it's up to you know you as parents to make sure you do safety precautions. Uh, I've learned that you know firsthand that we need to 
um, as parents or as uh, people or guardians, or, or we have to have safety precautions. Like when, when the kids start using needles and stuff, make sure you they use the needle and point it away from themselves. Um, something you know I kind of took for granted a little bit. But as a young kid, I remember my grandma, you know, taught me that those those same things. My the people that have taught me always, you know, did like a little safety thing. I remember one time I was at the youth center, and I just came in. You know, I taught the kids. You know, I did you know did my part and gave them a little safety spill spiel <laughs> um, and how to use the rotary cutter. Rotary cutter is this you know a little um, like a pizza cutter like a thing, and it's got a really sharp blade, and you can use it, and it cuts things really easy. But you always want to cut away from yourself or away from your finger <laughs> and uh, um, anyway I taught the kids how to use that and I also taught them how to use the awl how you you, you, you point the awl in, in the opposite direction you know never point it all at yourself or your body you know anywhere at your body you know I did that little safety thing um, before we worked on our moccasins that we were making um, but there was a few people that were late and one of them was the young um, she was uh, one of the um, mentors that was there that that came in and, and, and worked with the kids also, but she was late. She she missed the safety class and she ended up <laughs> using the rotor and cut her finger. I was like, oh no, and and she was bleeding. And so we had to take care of her um, in the middle of, well, like, yeah, in the, in the beginning of the class, you know, and, 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 and she became like the person that, um, that missed the class and became the person that oh that's you know, see that's why that's why you you know she became <laughs> my example of why you don't you know roll towards yourself or poke at yourself because you'll stab yourself and you'll bleed all over your craft or all over your stuff and I've done that before you know some of my beadwork I would bleed uh, my own blood <laughs> on some of the 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 beadwork that I had done <laughs> on accident you know I really don't um, you know. So if you got um, something like that for me, you know, it's very special um, craft type of thing I did for you. But anyway, <clears throat> talking about art and different arts for him, I was just thinking about James, um, James Hermes. Um, he does a lot of uh, artwork and craft work on feathers, um, which is pretty cool. You know, um, I think about my uncles. Um, they used to do the same thing. They used to do a lot of uh, um, the things that he used to do that he does. Um, they used to little draw little uh, flags and make little designs, and they would you know give some of those to the veterans. Um, back in the day, you know, they used to hand paint stuff on little feathers, and they would you know straighten feathers. I know my uncle Ricky would do that. Um, also, you know, he would work with eagle feathers and feathers like that. Um, uh, as far as Native American church, you know, but they also used to paint at times to make extra money on the side. You know, sometimes they needed some money, and they would uh, paint feathers and and. You know, they would spray use he would use spray paint because he was like an artist, um, and he would also use you know acrylic paint and actual not acrylic paint but um the real stuff the oil based paint, um, and but anyway I kind of got off track when I was talking about Sevilla and I really appreciated Sevilla taking on, um, my son and teaching him how to use some of that um that oil based paint what is it called Thomas. The oil-based paint that you that Sevilla kind of taught you how to use, and oil paint? oh yeah, I guess it's just oil paint. But even you know how to do the cleanup was very important, and some of that that can be very toxic. You know, it's something you want to kind of look into as a, as a parent, as a mentor. You know, you want to make sure that when they do the cleanup, um, that stuff can be very toxic to to young people, and it should be used outside. It can make you high. So your you know kids are behind you doing their artwork and all of a sudden you're getting high because you're on the side of it because <laughs> they're cleaning their brushes with that you know that's that 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 stuff that, that um I can't even think of it it's like a of the most people use turpentine yeah turpentine I um, use linseed oil linseed oil is very um linseed oil is a little uh, safer to use <clears throat> versus turpentine is very harsh acidic type stuff you know that very stinks really bad <laughs> it makes you you know cross-eyed I can't use that stuff uh, but anyway artwork and art itself you know has been very therapeutical I know for us in my little family you know we've done all kind of things you know from I know my wife just got um, a little um, even her book club is doing some artwork um, she's supposed to be doing some knitting and they gave her like a knitting kit uh, which is really cool. I was like, oh wow, that's pretty cool. But she's, you know, she's got to work on that and learn, teach herself or learn how to knit and do that. And there's things that you can learn on 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 the YouTube, <laughs> looking them up on you know the internet. You can actually learn a lot of different crafts. 
I know a lot of different native craft people are on YouTube and they, they have little teaching tutorials about their craft and um, and sharing it and all that, you know, in itself, you know, like I said, is very therapeutical and, and you know, even my wife, <clears throat> we work with a lot of young kids and, you know, we've been bringing in a lot of different native artists into work with the kids. I know for uh, a while there, we actually bought some gourds around here. Uh, the Kumeyaay people use the gourds, um, the bigger gourds. Um, uh, come to find out, you know, there's safety in that, that you need to know that inside those gourds, you know, they're actually, you know, is toxic inside those gourds. Once you cut them open, it's very, can, that, that dusk is very toxic and can be bad for your, your health. So you should actually clean those gourds outside away and wear like a, a big old safety mask, um, you know, M95 type of mask where you know, it keeps the filter wear even, even better, like one of those um, paint masks when you work with that stuff to clean it out or out, use it outdoors and clean it all out. Once it's all cleaned out, you, know, you even have to go so far as um, putting bleach inside there to, you know, clean all that mold that, that, that inside that, because um, it's pretty much decayed inside the those gourds. And so there's a safety part of that you should be aware of as kids. And if you ever get, you know, the chance to work with some of the native people, and that's what some of the things we, we always have to teach is safety with uh, some of our arts and our crafts. And, and, and it's fun in the end when you get to paint on them and, and do you know wood burning or something like that <clears throat> so there's many forms and you know here at the youth center that's what we also do i know miss carolina uh, has it craft week every friday and she's been they've been changing it up um because you know sometimes you know kids get a little bored with uh, one craft or maybe they have to make it a little simpler or change it up a little bit to get some of the kids you know so but they've been doing that they've been doing a lot of different crafts and now i know right now we have a i went to the youth center to pick up a bag of, of craft items that, that Thomas has been doing. He's been doing them slowly um, when he could, when he when he could, and when he can. Um, I know he has got a bunch of little projects that he's been doing uh, with the youth center, and they have a live um, a webcast or web um, thing, uh, Crafty Friday. Uh, what time is that, Thomas? Um, Friday at four to five. Let's get crafty. Yeah, Friday at four to five. Let's get crafty with Kathy or Kathy. Carolina <laughs> I'm thinking about the other lady uh, but yeah so there's many forms of getting crafty getting and that is all a, all good for you know prevention you know and also good for our native people if you can get um, I think a lot of the native crafts you know if you really get involved in it like like I was saying like um, even learning how to weave um, um, uh, Indian or Navajo rug or something like that takes a lot more um, preparing and preparation even doing uh, a, a basket uh, I think I was talking about that uh, here the community people you know it takes a lot of preparation to to gather all your materials um, prepare to, to make those baskets and to make the dye and even cleaning some of your stuff I know um, and so there's a lot of preparation um, in that I know a lot of people also do work with things like um, working with acorns and acorns can be the acidic um, stuff from the acorns you need to sift the acorns and do like some preparation preparation to do it uh, beforehand and, and then you can work with it you know safely and you can make like necklaces or you can make what's called we wish around here I know the terminology that they usually use during um, the wake ceremony but uh, but they also use it for other things and it's very um, a nutritious food that the Kumeyaay people you know is art both art and all both a form of food uh, nowadays people call that like a mega food or a super food <laughs> is uh, is uh, the 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 acorn but a long time ago people um, um, ate that every day it was a daily um, protein supplement that you know worked really good um, along with other things their high different diet so you know art in itself you know has many different roles it's not only like i said not only <clears throat> used to craft and to make things but also you can use it to to make foods to make eat um and people even consider um being a chef or making you know different dishes an art form um if you start preparing to make it really like, fancy you know make it really nice and you know preparing can be also considered an art form or a way to cook i know a lot of people have some um ways that they super secret you know indian fry bread techniques you know. um and even making fry bread can be art i know sometimes we make <laughs> we tend to make like little hearts with our art or make eyes and all 
as kids we always did that we always you know put a couple extra holes in our fry bread when we were making it with our mom and then put eyes and then we have masks and stuff and just kind of funny stuff um <laughs> so i guess maybe that's us growing up kind of in an artsy way i know we used to do things even like cut things you know to make shapes um uh, anyway i was just kind of thinking of all the things you know as far as art is concerned you know how it is uh plays a role in in my life you know how it you know has also you know been a preventive 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 preventative i can't even talk today uh preventative measure or um and also you know a cultural way of teaching things you know a lot of our, our native art you know has a story behind it um where it came from i know um there's even a traditional story um getting back to the um the weaving of the Navajo rug, you know, it was, they said it was taught to us by um, by um, a Spider Woman, and and so there's a whole story that's taught and learned, and you have to learn that story and and, and know the significance and, and the story behind it. And, uh, before you know, they they teach you how to do all the the, the stuff to prepare for it, and so there's a lot of uh, um, in depth learning that's done, you know, with also not only um, art in itself but language you know language um, a lot of the things that we use you know there's a language and you know, that some of the stuff we is non you know it doesn't transfer to english or they don't have a word for it in english but we have it in our native language and, and we teach it in that way so language is also a part of the art in that way as, as indian indigenous people that's how how deep it goes you know um thinking about our arts and stuff like that um I was also talking about um, the sand painting. Um, we use that in our ceremony, and it's a sand painting that they use for the sick person. They would make a, a, a sand painting on the ground, and then once that ceremony was over, they would, you know, remove that. Some people call it art, but actually, you know, it's a medicine that we use from all the things that we use, and we we cleanse it once again and take away the the bad things, and in that way, you know. And also, you know, um, I was always taught, and when I make. Um, something or art you know the first time i ever make a craft or something it's always good good medicine to give give that first item that you make away you know my first bead work and i gave it away or my first feather work i gave it away or first whatever kind of craft is always good medicine as native people native teachers to give that away and it gives like i said a reciprocal relationship where we give good things to good people and we, we earn um we earn what we earn or get back what we get in equal or ten times full, as they sometimes say, um, in in good feelings and, and, and thankfulness, um, and so you know, like I said, it's a it's a it's a very good form that we that we practice as as native people. And you know, like I said, art is not just you know painting stuff. You know, I know a few um, indigenous native people that go go so far as you know even using um, the computer as art and doing a multimedia. Um, art form uh, i know our good friend larry who teaches an art class on monday you know that's what he's his degree is in you know um um and so you know he's been teaching the kids every monday uh three um just roll the basic techniques of using pencils and shading you know last week um we were, we were able to tune in we were at the wood shop me and thomas and he was able to to log in on my phone and, and you know he got luckily you know uh well, I don't want to say luckily because it was having issues with his on his end and so he was kind of or we were late but we showed up just in time to be able to log into art class and Thomas got a lot of working on shades and how to draw objects and using you know like circles or different um, um, patterns like that usually the circle is very important um, talking about talking circles but Larry like I said you know is a graphic art design designer I don't know how I can't Graphic remember. Designer. Yeah, and so he's very talented. And at the same time, you know, he's able to teach young kids <clears throat> just the real basics of you know drawing a circle. And I know Thomas was drawing. Um, he had draw drew in, um, a Snorlax. I don't know if you guys know what Pokemon is, but anyway, he drew like this really chubby snow. I know he was drawing a deer, and he was like it looked like Bambi, but when he was doing it, it looked kind of 
a 3D Bambi where it was looking in you know the opposite direction. But it, but once he you know did the certain circle, it actually you know turned it around, and looked like Bambi was facing <laughs> facing you, which was really you know really cool and a really cool technique and and things you know that that that's you know free. I know um, here at the youth center that the young kids can learn. Um, I know some adults. I think we we try to shoot for 24 and younger. Uh, we also, you know, try to get some of the um, college students involved um, with that. So, you know, if you're listening, college students, and I know a lot of all across Indian country, I know a lot of uh, Indian healths uh, are doing things like this, you know, with storytelling, with art, um, and it's all prevention, you know, also doing you know, showcasing like um, traditional dancing, traditional singing. Uh, that's also an art form. You know, I do a lot of uh, um, talks and, and and I also wear my my dance regalia. I used to go a lot to a lot of different schools and you know teach and educate. And at the same time, you know I do that art where I do art of dancing and teach the story at the same time. So that's a form of another art that you know I I I, I dabble in. Hey, um, so there's lots to to learn, lots to do, lots to lots of places to you know. Yeah, you can connect not only here at the youth center, but like I said, at the local libraries they have arts. Um, they'll give you crafts you take you know sometimes you have to pay a little fee you know five three bucks just to pay for materials and then you have the whole craft and so which is pretty cool so take advantages of some of those things and like I said on the internet there's a lot of uh, YouTube tutorials on different forms of art I know I get a lot of ideas um, working on my wood my woodworking from there and also different ideas of working how to do all kind of stuff <laughs> DIY stuff um, and it's a form of art form of therapy for myself and all these you know different arts that I do um, are very therapeutic and they be can you know they can be therapeutic for you um, even I know a lot of people are not really that crafty but then they start getting into it they become crafty and I know other people that still are you know um, they don't think they can do art so they do other things other forms of um, like even just logging or um, you know not logging tabulating or you know jotting down in a notebook um, things that happen to you today you know it's very um, a way of prevention also a way of, of relieving stress you know as, you know for me you know even singing a song is very you know stress relieving it's an art form when you can sing sing good um, and, and it takes a lot of practice but anyway um, I think I've talked a lot about different forms of art and, and different ways that you can you know for yourself for your kids for your community that you can tap into that can be a preventive preventative measure you know for all the things that we don't want our young people our young kids to do or be a part of or you know there's a lot of things bad out there in the world but this is uh one fa one way one form that we can all you know kind of come together and do um so we just wanted to talk about that i think next week um we're going to talk about um feathers and the gifting of feathers and all right now this is a time when um, a lot of people are doing bead work for um, graduation caps, I know I've seen a lot of tutorials out there. People doing crafting, um, beadwork on crafts, and also doing crafting for the, the feathers that will hang from some of our our graduates. And so uh, um, next week, I think that's what I'll be talking about: um, gifting of feathers and and a little bit of significance. And then we're gonna get more into feather work and working about working on um, another um, a feather. Um, I want to say reuse of feathers you know sometimes um, people will pass on and pass on to the next world and but they will leave their feathers or their their dance regalia with a person and you know how do we take care of that how do we reuse that stuff because um, they can't take it with them to the grave I mean you can um, but for most of us um, it's you know it's not not a good thing to to burn um, ego feathers you know I know I was always taught to release them into the the water and let them go uh, their own way that way <clears throat> but anyway we'll be talking about that more in, in our next talk so you guys have a good day have a good night and tonight is soaring eagles uh, soaring eagles dance class so we're gonna have we having our, our dance class virtual dance class coming up at uh, six right six to seven so it'll be a lot um, yeah I did uh, I think I did talk about this last was it last year? Huh. Around about the same time. So we're going to re revisit that and re talk about it and maybe add um, some other insight to it. I know. So, and like I said, this is a, my talks are more of a discussion. So if you ever have any art, I always share some of the art <clears throat> um, suggestions or um, 
ways that it's you know helped you positively or has been preventative type medicine um, art in itself um, yeah so leave some comments if you if you like you're more than welcome to also you know just kind of go over the uh, the weekly plan you know this today was art class with Larry today was cooking matters with um, Carolina I think she made a, a chicken salad it looked like I was listening but I wasn't listening I was doing some other things at the same time and I saw she was making she some really, it looked really good I wish I would, could go and get some chicken salad right now uh, then you got me and then uh, Soren Eagles um, from 6 to 7 and then tomorrow again you can uh, get healthy with Ethan He's doing some fitness with Ethan, you know, uh, that guy is really flexible and really strong. We try to do some of the things that I do, it's almost impossible. You know, me and the family always like to like to do that with Ethan, um, 3.30 to 4, um, just getting um, some sort of movement going in our lives um, virtually. And then on Thursday, we have VGRR Youth Center Talking Circle again. That's from 45, you know. So, yeah, so get your kids involved, get your community involved. You know, we also have Let's Get Crafty. On Zoom four to five with Carolina again this week. I have another craft. Um, I wish I, I don't know where I put, picked up the craft work. It's two weeks of crafts, and I didn't get to look at it. Um, but anyway, so get, take advantage of all these um, opportunities and good times and get crafty. Let's get crafty, everybody. You know, smudge, don't judge. You guys have a good day, good night, good evening, whatever time of day it is for you. Um, have a good one. Yes, thank you, Nate. Oh, awesome.